One of my favorite games of all time has to be Shenmue. If you've been following the channel for a while, you know that I have a deep love for the Shenmue franchise. I remember the first time I ever played the game. It was an absolutely mind-blowing experience. I was probably around 15, and one of my good buddies who lived in Georgia had just gotten a Dreamcast and a copy of Shenmue, and I believe NFL 2K. And I remember going down there to visit him, and we were playing a bunch of NFL, and he was like, do you know about this game Shenmue? And I was like, I've heard about it, but I've never really played it. And we sat there and played that game for hours and hours straight. We didn't sleep, we didn't eat, we didn't do anything. We just played Shenmue. Because it was unlike anything that I had ever played at the time. This huge open 3D world. NPC characters who had their own life cycles and did things on certain times. And you know, stores were only open during certain times. This huge mystery adventure. It was just absolutely mind-blowing to see this game. And I instantly became a fan of the series. When I got older, I ended up picking Shenmue 2 up on the Dreamcast. I imported that game from England and I played through it. I then got Shenmue 2 on the original Xbox. It was just a fantastic franchise that I've always loved. But the history of Shenmue is kind of spotty when it comes to things. Originally supposed to be a Sega Saturn game, it was then released on the Dreamcast. And the budget for that game was just so big that it ended up being one of the factors that led to Sega getting out of the hardware market because it didn't really reciprocate the amount of money and time that was put into the game when it was released. So you ended up getting the first two chapters of Shenmue and it was supposed to be like a 13 chapter after series they had planned on doing all of these different Shenmue games and we never got around to it and the Shenmue series has been a bit dormant and quiet but with Shenmue 3 coming out in August of 2019 that was funded via crowdfunding a lot of people have Shenmue on the mind and during Sega's fan expo that was held a couple months ago myself and stupid Joe from game sex stupid Joe we're watching it on the channel live and when they announced Shenmue 1 and 2 HD collection we were absolutely ecstatic it was so great to see Shenmue back in the spotlight and yes, now the game has released on the PS4, the Xbox One, and Steam. But you gotta remember, Shenmue 1 came out nearly 20 years ago. So how did these games hold up? And is it still worth revisiting or visiting for the first time if you've never experienced the Shenmue series? Today on the channel, that's what we're gonna figure out and that's what we're gonna talk about. So sit back, relax, make sure you subscribe to the channel, and let's talk about the Shenmue 1 and 2 HD collection. Hey, RGT85, hey Sean. Oh my God, it's Stevie Richards! So if you've never played the Shenmue if you've never played the Shenmue games before, I will briefly try to catch you up on the story of the game. Basically, the first game starts out and you will play as a character named Ryo Hazuki. And Ryo's father is then killed by a man named Lan Di, who is like some weird Chinese dude and you don't really know what's going on. You enter your dojo and Lan Di is strangling your father trying to get this mirror and that's it. He kills your dad, you are put into a state of shock, and then you decide to go out into the world and find Lan Di and figure out why he killed your father, what this mirror was about, and that's pretty much the catalyst for the game. And Shinbu 1 and 2 are really just groundbreaking games, especially when they released at the time, because like I said, it uses an open world aspect that was unlike anything that was seen before. You basically start out at your dojo, and then you go into the city, and you try to find out what's happening. Every character that you come across, you can talk to. NPCs, some of them have more dialogue than others, some of them have more to say than others. After the events of Shenmue 1, you then go to a different location with Shenmue 2 and continue your quest to find Lan Di. So brief little spoilers there, you start out in one area which is pretty much your hometown and then you go to a different area in Shenmue 2 and that's pretty much it. That's pretty much all I'm going to talk about story wise because I've played these games a million times and I really feel like the story is something that you are supposed to invest yourself in. It's really about finding things for yourself. And one thing I really enjoy about the story aspect of the game is how many different ways there are to skin a cat. And what do I mean by that? Well, basically Rio documents everything in a little journal. And that's sort of a reminder of what you're doing, what your current goal is, and how what you need to do and what you need to find out about. But what I really liked about the Shenmue series is how many different ways there are to get to that goal. You'll notice sometimes that there are like full pages missing from your little journal. And you're like, well, did I miss something? And yes, you did. There are de definitely ways to streamline the way to get to your goal to progress the story. There's ways that you can do things, but there's also little
little side avenues that you can do as well to sort of progress the story it's basically you could go more in depth with it or if you know what you're doing you could just sort of skip certain events to get to the final conclusion of that story point and I really like that about the game honestly I've like I said I've played Shenmue 1 and 2 a million different times but every time I play it I see at least one new cutscene I see at least one new piece of dialogue that I never thought I would see so the basis of Shenmue is basically exploration and finding out things. There are other gameplay mechanics put in there as well. There's a fighting system that arguably is a bit clunky, and it was definitely sort of clunky when it originally released, and it definitely feels clunky and dated now. But it works well. You know, you can go to these little areas on the map and practice your different moves and stuff to get familiar with it, and then these things happen. And in Shenmue 1, there's not many deviations when it comes to the gameplay as much as in Shenmue 2. There's definitely deviations in Shenmue 1 there's things like forklift driving and of course the arcade the arcade is really cool as well because at the time it was like a way to play these old Sega games in an arcade and it was just so mind-blowing because the arcade has a timer on it and you know it runs on a certain cycle every store in the game runs on a certain cycle everything in the game is just you know like a living breathing world which is unlike anything seen at the time and in Shenmue 2 there's definitely more deviations when it comes to things like locations characters and story progression so but honestly I figure a lot of you guys are familiar with how Shenmue works so what I want to talk about is basically the differences in the HD collection as opposed to the original releases the main difference of course is the graphics the graphics have been cleaned up with HD textures and everything looks pretty good it definitely still looks like a Dreamcast game let's be honest it doesn't look anything like a GTA 5 or anything close to that but it looks good enough you can also choose 16 by 9 or 4 by 3 mode now it is worth noting that if you use 16 16 by 9 which I think looks really good and is what I use mostly the cutscenes will still play out in 4x3 mode not a huge deal but it is worth noting now the controls of the game haven't been spruced up or anything so it's still that sort of clunky tank control like system feels a bit like the older Resident Evils but with more control so that is worth noting this isn't a game that they really rebuilt from the ground up they really just put a new coat of paint on it made it applicable for the PS4 the Xbox one and Steam and released the game and I'm okay with that because of the price of the game the game is only $30 no matter what platform you get it on the PS4 the Xbox one or Steam and you're getting both of the original Shenmue games in HD so to me that's worth it because you're gonna sink hundreds of hours into this game if you enjoy the gameplay style and you can appreciate what it was when it originally released I think there will be some people who will be like oh these games have you know they've aged horribly and it's just so silly for people to say that in my opinion because they're timeless games the writing is pretty solid yes there's a lot of quirky voice acting yes there's a lot of lines in the game that sometimes don't make sense and yes one thing I do want to mention is the audio definitely hasn't been retooled or anything so it can be a bit jarring when you have these beautiful HD textures but you have this sound that sounds a bit muffled Sega has said that they are working on patches for both the PS4 and the Xbox version of the game as they have found some bugs as time has gone on so that is worth noting that they are they do seem to be aware of it but I did notice the sound was a bit jarring especially when you compare it to the HD graphics it would have been nice if the sound was cleaned up as well but all in all the Shenmue HD collection like I think you expected me to say is absolutely fantastic it's definitely worth revisiting these two games either if you've played them a hundred times or if you've never played them at all it's an interesting piece of gaming history to me the Shenmue collection and especially Shenmue 1 I guess needs to be in the same breath as games like Super Mario Brothers or The Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time because they are games that really transcended gaming they are games that really put gaming into the front light and the spotlight and are just some of the best games of all time Super Mario Brothers really invented the 2d platformer the Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time was this awesome 3d adventure game and honestly Shenmue is like the grandfather of these open world games if you play games like Yakuza you could definitely see the influences that the Yakuza series has when it comes to Shenmue honestly I always felt that Yakuza was the spiritual successor to Shenmue and it just cost less it cost less money for Sega to make so that's why they kind of went along with it but honestly if you're rather whether you're a retro gamer or you're a modern gamer if you own a ps4 if you own an xbox one if you own a pc you need to check out the shenmue collection because it honestly will send a message to sega that hey your old ips are still important to us and these awesome collections of games are worth it and you know 30 bucks for two awesome games that you're gonna sink hundreds of hours into if you like the gameplay style it's more than worth it in my opinion an absolutely fantastic collection and i will continue to play these games over and over again because now i don't have to 
worry about pulling out my Dreamcast or pulling out my original Xbox to play these games. I can just play them on a modern console. So definitely check out the Shenmue HD collection. Absolutely fantastic. I love it. I love that Sega did this. I love they priced it at $30. And it's just great. I want to thank Sega for sending over a review copy. Yes, my review was like a day late, but honestly, I was playing through the games and I was sort of rushing through them to make sure I met the review, re review deadline. And then I was like, you know what? I just want to play these games. I just want to play these games again and go back to that time in my life where, you know, you don't have to worry about jobs and money and stuff. And it was definitely an awesome experience. So make sure you guys check out the Shenmue HD collection if you appreciate gaming history or just 3D open world games at all because you're going to have a good time. So thank you for checking out this video. If you're new to the channel, make sure you subscribe and turn on notifications. Let me know in the comments section down below if you plan on picking up the Shenmue HD collection or if you already have. And as always, I will catch you guys on the next video. Later.